Thank you, Elias, um, for inviting me. Uh, it is a very, it's a pleasure uh, working with you on this, and 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 I think, I think the experiences that uh, we are we are developing here in Cambodia are absolute relevance, and a slight also a, a slightly different. Uh, this is a project uh, I would like to present, uh, which is uh, focusing on sustainable landscapes and ecotourism. It is focusing on, on a landscape of protected areas uh, in, in Cambodia, which you see here on the map. Uh, it is um, it's basically englobing more than 12 uh, protected areas in the Cardamom Mountains in the Tonle Sap in the, in the western part of, of the country. Uh, and the Ministry of Economy and Finance um, has envisaged um, the development of ecotourism, but also the partnership between communities and private sector, not only on, on tourism, but also when it comes to uh, sustainable businesses, conservation friendly activities as the key principle for engagement in the landscapes. Uh, with ecotourism certainly in the lead and because ecotourism or tourism in general has been the leading income uh, of uh, export services, more than 90% of export services have been coming pre-COVID from tourism. Um, the operation is funded uh, through the World Bank uh, up to uh, with a loan of more than $50 million, uh, $50 million with the objective to establish a, mod a model for environmental and social economic sustainability for the protected areas. So this is not about conservation. It is about sustainable development in the landscape. So now these, and this is, I think, one of the most, uh, one of the most important messages here. It's about uh, the collaboration between ministries. We're looking at the spatial concept. We're looking at the concept that tries to organize uh, ecotourism around a vision, a spatial vision, but also uh, um, between a sector, cross-sectoral vision. And this is quite a complex arrangement. Uh, it is led, the destination manager is in this case, the Minister of Environment, very closely working with the Minister of Tourism. However, when it comes to infrastructure development, rural roads, wash infrastructure and others, water infrastructure, we are working with the Minister of Rural Development. Uh, and then also at the subnational level with different entities. Uh, so that demands development of a common vision on where we will take such an, an, an engagement. And we come to this uh, and what we are currently doing. So the areas of investment and most of it is providing, is improving the enabling environment, basically the, the conditions for private sector engagement, but also providing the infrastructure for ecotourism development. Second, then as well, rural roads improvement, access, et cetera. And then also, I don't want to put this first, but uh, certainly where we started this is the improvement of the protected areas themselves, with the zoning, demarcation, and taking care of the destination itself. And uh, when we started the project two years ago, there was no, none of the protected areas were zoned or, or demarcated that that is, that has been the first steps moving forward. So thankfully the Cardamon Mountains, uh, has, we have not started, we, need, we didn't need to start from scratch. Um, it, it, there is a sizable pool of ready, ready to small scale domestic and foreign investors, but also large scale. At present, there are eight large-scale investments and 35 small-scale ecotourism development projects, most of them community-based ecotourism projects that have been supported by donors or, or, or private initiatives over the, over the years. However, those community-based ecotourism projects uh, have not been financially very sustainable, and that's why also the push from the Ministry of Economy and Finance to, wave, to, to find ways and how to bring together private investments and community-based investments as a concept, as a model, as a principle of engagement, connecting those uh, around common products and zones and networks uh, throughout uh, uh, over, the, over the timeline of the project. Um, the Carbon Mountains is a, a huge wealth of valuable locations, uh, untapped potentials, waterfalls. Um, it's the longest, the longest wild elephant 
trail in the world, if you believe it or not, that it's, um, uh, it's incred incredible wells of, of potential destinations that are still to be developed. And there is a sizable and growing market for tourism in protected areas. We know that this is globally the case, but uh, only COVID-19 demonstrated actually how much really in terms of demand uh, from the national market, the national, national middle class really going and discovering for the first time protected areas as a, as a, as a tourism destination. And we also very lucky that there is a large community already engaged in tourism services uh, that are very much connected to Angkor Wat and, and the coastal tourism. And uh, certainly there is a, a wealth of operators. However, during COVID as well, these, um, these uh, operators have been eroded quite, quite uh, significantly and certainly there is much room for, for recovery, certainly. But this is the moment where we thought, and it's very important to develop a new vision on what we do, how we position ourselves again in, in this, in this uh, new, new world of uh, post-COVID recovery and, and how we improve the conditions to attract the necessary investments to move forward. So the big challenge is certainly is here that although we had a number of national tourists discovering these areas, uh, we had uh, the international inflow of tourists uh, could not or only partially compensate this, the income uh, of these community-based ecotourism activities. And certainly that has been a major, major issue uh, for most of the workers and, and laborers and, 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 and entrepreneurs in the space that have to, had to close most of those uh, most of those activities. So now, this in two weeks, we're going to open. Uh, Cambodia will open uh, the borders again, and certainly this is the moment where we have to we have to position ourselves again. Second, the protected area tourism in Cambodia is not yet clearly defined. There's a lack of capacity and uh, cross sectoral engagement and and um, lack of standards and guidelines and infrastructure is still very basic. And, but most of all is that there is a lack of a common mission and plans for tourism in the protected areas. Uh, and there is a lack of common vision between park authorities, communities, regional authorities, private sector, et cetera, entrepreneurs, uh, et cetera, leading to a large, largely to an impact on natural resource management, encroachment and other things, but basically affecting the destination itself. So the first thing that needed to be done in this case, and it's very important to bring everybody together on the, providing this destination vision uh, and investment plans, uh, which is which is a, has been a long-term process. We're starting with a market and product diagnostic uh, where we are, and now moving to the preferred destination vision, um, and ultimately to a detailed action plan that will guide as well early next year, the major investments, roads, et cetera, road infrastructure, gates, uh, but also the investments information centers, uh, investments in trails and, and, and the capacity needs and, and, and so on and so forth. Um, the strategic investments that uh, we are currently already developing to attract investors to create this enabling environment have been focusing very much on the improvement of the regulations to streamline the current regulatory processes already for investments in ecotourism. Cambodia luckily already had this kind of certain concessions, we're not calling it concession, but providing the space for investors in this space but for at community level, but also private investors. However, those regulatory processes have been eroded and not very clear from the outside. So activities that in, included um, that included uh, certainly application procedures, fees, revenue sharing mechanisms, roles of the government agencies and how they collaborate, and also uh, how to apply and the process to get to, to, those, um, to those project approval processes have had to be reorganized. And this is currently in the making and also will come out in after the consultation with the private sector again. Second is the road infrastructure planning and the wash infrastructure. And that is very, very essential currently identifying where the priorities are, refurbishing the road infrastructure, and then also defining what kind of infrastructure, what kind of road infrastructure we will need 
And it's also a learning process because roads are not roads and we need to have roads in protected areas and ecotourism uh, and then also water supply. Uh, it needs a complete new vision on how current, on, on how typically these roads are being implemented in, in, in Cambodia. Moving forward also with the business development um, and also with the communication of ecotourism vision, then uh, aligning ourselves as well, this very specific branding of the Cardamom Mountains and protected areas within the context of the broader, uh, broader um, communication strategy of tourism in Cambodia. Um, uh, we are what we are working towards is establishing these models for larger and smaller ecotourism investments and operators now allow these partnerships between communities and private investors to happen and certainly in facilitating this broker this honest brokership role as well that the ministry that the destination manager uh, also needs to play in order to protect the interests of the communities but also to guide these private investors where to go Second, also to connect these cardamom, uh, cardamoms with other tourist products within the country, connecting Angkor with cardamoms and the Tonle Sap with the coast, uh, networks, trails, operators, connectivity on, uh, and then physically and also conceptually, and enhance the visitors management, promote this responsible travel behavior that I, is lacking uh, so far and only partially being implemented. And ultimately create this tourism products aligned with the protected areas very specifically. And here we heard a lot about the products that you are presenting, very similar, the activities, uh, how the livelihood activities within the protected areas and how they can become tourist destination, tourist products uh, is, is essential. And it's certainly something that, uh, that we are working towards. Just uh, the last slide, and I think it's very interesting as well, we produced the role of the World Bank is not only the financer, but also the provider you know, of, of ideas and bringing best practices and, and also supporting analytical work in this, in, this, in this context. And we just issued the, the enabling ecotourism development, um, how, on how to improve the enabling environment regulations in, in Cambodia on ecotourism. And we are now uh, investing as well in the regional demand assessment, focusing on Chinese and national tourism, and specifically focusing on Laos and Cambodia. Uh, this is uh, in the recovery, certainly the most important unknown, uh, how, how the Chinese tourism will be positioning themselves over the next five to 10 years in, in these countries and what kind of products they would like to see. And then also combining the coastal ecotourism vision aligned with the cardamoms and the tonnes up in order to uh, fill a, this void as well on the marine protected areas and providing a, a larger vision. So these are the analytical pieces that uh, we are producing this year, um, uh, but we continue providing this, uh, this advisory role over time and also working very closely with, uh, with Laos and, and other countries in the context, in the regional context. Um, I would like to thank you for, for the space that you provided yeah. us here. Uh, this, uh, I find a very interesting uh, way how to frame uh, tourism in the context of uh, protected areas. Over to you.